All right, we are now recording. Let's see what mischief we can get up to. Uh, I am just going to turn off, uh, actually no, I'll leave the webcam on until Aaron gets here. Um, I think I've just heard him pop in. So, oh my goodness, there's a good looking rooster. Um, evening folks, not just a normal webinar, you've got us live, in person, and uh, we're going to rock your world tonight. So mate, thanks for coming in. Ha thanks for having me. I feel like I should try this. <laughs> so we can match the pose on the screen. See, the people watching the recording, they can't see the live camera. Oh, they can, can so I? they'll only see this and they'll oh. say, what are they talking about? So folks, if you're watching the recording, everyone else got to see live <laughs> the, the webcam. Uh, so very good. Thanks, man. Thanks for hanging out for a little bit. Oh, I'm glad to be here. Needed now more than ever. Yeah. Uh, I, pr I promise you guys. An exciting so. time I hear for uh, Queensland. Well, I mean, that's uh, that's what we will. Oh, we won't say anything yet. Will we? uh, well, no. Well, first off, before we get sort of into that, that little reason we're here, I just wanted to just quickly say that the stuff that I'm going to share with you guys, uh, I didn't invent. You know, I, I pay credit where it's due, and there's a long list of 5,000 plus hours of me studying mentors, and you'll notice second name on the list there is Aaron Sansoni, and there's a, a history, look, I couldn't even start to name them all, but understand, if you've heard some of this stuff before, um, I didn't invent it all. You know, I'm a brilliant student, and as you can see down the bottom, 5,000 hours of me studying these and other people. So um, I've just figured out, I suppose, a unique way to implement it based on strategies I've learned from people like yourself and implement it in my business and in other of my students' businesses and it's worked great guns and, uh, and, and we are now leading the way in many areas across the country. My students are kicking the butt out of, out of people with only a year or two years' experience are destroying people with 20 and 30 years' experience. Yeah. You know, and I know we've been working together with a bunch of people and that's what we're seeing across the board. That's the reason your guys are killing. That's true. I mean, you look, you look, look on the Facebook. Look at you know the results of, of the top performers. I mean, I think Sebastian, you know, he's near like top LJ Hooker. Yeah, won all like the awards, five yeah. awards, and yep. he was a discount agent, you know, three or four years ago. I think he's joining us at the boot camp Absolutely. as well. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it works. But I think the point of that is that um, it's not. You don't have to always find something that's brand new that's never been done before to be successful. A lot of people just understand that there's a big chunk of it which is the right stuff, repeatedly done, uh, which is what gets the results, and then you've got the stuff on the top of it, you know what I mean? So the magic tool's got to have a base yeah. of something else that works with it. So if they hear something they've heard before, it's because they've got to implement it. Yeah, and, and, and it, it worked then, and, and it works. Absolutely. <laughs> so, so let me just, uh, before we get on to it, guys, um, and I'll just bring up your questions. Uh, when Aaron was speaking, you guys could hear Aaron, uh, I'm guessing. Yeah, we all good there? Just quickly type in uh, the scale of 1 to 10 that we did before. Um, How do we look like twins? <laughs> yeah, Steve? someone said on there we look like twins. <laughs> Thanks, Siegfried. Love the guy. Uh, we're still good. Okay, so you can hear Aaron as well. All right, well, we won't interrupt each other anymore with uh, how do we sound. Let's get on to what we're here for. And if you aren't here, for Queenslanders especially, but understand that this is it. For Queenslanders, we are deregulating real estate agent commission. The new law will take effect 1 December 2014. What is that? Two weeks. We are two weeks away from you. <laughs> A round of applause from Aaron. We are now able, as of the 1st of December, and now one of our students, as soon as I, I announced to the crew that it was coming, someone who was at our boot camp went out that week and got like 3.5% commission. And he bragged about it to us on our Facebook page. And I said, man, the law's passed, but it hasn't taken effect. Go back and get... Have you money back? <laughs> Go and hand some money back because you've just broken the... But that's how powerful these strategies are, that literally the day after, he went out and got 3.5%. Yeah. You know, that's what's at stake here. And when deregulation happens, guys, we used to be capped at 2.5%. There will be the majority of people are going to go down. Yeah. You know? Well, people look at price and they and they, they weigh up price, which is an indicator of, of quality compared to products in every industry, not even just real estate. So you've got two guys or girls that are 2.5 and 2.5, and a little bit of difference on, on, on marketing. That they're looking at those. So we've got a guy that's 3.5 or a girl that's 3.5 and has a whole bunch of other stuff that they're doing at the same time. We start to understand that there is going to be a difference in that person. But it, it's really tough to be like, we do tons of stuff, but we're the same price. People look and go, but well, then why are you the same price? And you've got to go through the whole reason why. So mm. you guys are, you know, let me tell you something, deregulation for you, New South Wales, I think as well, these are deregulated. If I was going to open a real estate business, it would be in a deregulated state, absolutely, because I would want to be able to charge what I'm worth. 
which causes controversy sometimes. But <laughs> I would want to be able to charge what I'm worth and achieve what I'm worth because you know I'm the consumer. I mean, everyone that calls an agent, Glenn's been an you know an agent. He's a real estate trainer. I'm not a real estate trainer. I've, I've not been a real estate agent, but I would want to charge what I'm worth. And if I was implementing what Glenn teaches, what what I teach, what Chris Gilmore and all these guys that you know work with us teach. I would want to get more than the average Joe that rocks up and says, well, let's just charge 2.5% and let's whack you on Facebook and go for it. You know? mm. So you guys are in a brilliant position. I mean, I know you're from all over the country at the moment, but brilliant position for, for, for Queenslanders at the moment. <laughs> Definitely. Amazing. Definitely. And that's the thing. If you guys aren't deregulated, I think Queensland might have been the last one because I know that uh, you know New South Wales went through this some years ago. Uh, I think we might be the last one. So what that means is, for us Queenslanders, we're now catching up, but these are the skills that are going to allow some agency in a marketplace to charge 3 and 4%, and some will only get 1% because we've seen that in other states where deregulation happened. Most of the agents dropped their fees. And my, my mate, our, our mutual friend Chris Gilmore said, wait a minute, you didn't have to wait till deregulation to drop your fees. You could have done that before. So why did it result that on average they all dropped? Because, you know, panic set in. Now, here's the thing. Aaron, Aaron just alluded to it. Guys, there was recently some controversy, a 200 comment long post on Facebook that was questioning whether Aaron is worth $25,000 a day. Well, take it from someone who's paid it. You know, take it from someone who knows the people who've paid it. He charges it, he gets it, and he's worth it. Now, here's my sort of discussion on that, and this isn't, this isn't going to take the whole hour. This is going to take just a minute or two, but understand... There are some people who sell Lamborghinis and there are some people who sell Commodores. And the people who drive Commodores, I don't think, are going to say that the Lamborghini owner is wrong to charge it for the Lamborghini. They're both a car. They both get you from A to B. There's just, there is premium products. There is Qantas and there is Jetstar. There is Lamborghini and there is Commodore. You know, so the guy who is able to do something so incredible in our business, and that's charged 25 grand a day. I can't get it. Every other real estate trainer in this country cannot get it, and yet Aaron does. So who do you think I turn to when it comes time for deregulation to occur to get the most money? I bring the guy in who can do it, not the guy who can talk about it. Yeah, I agree. And I think there's multiple ways to look at it for you guys. I mean, you know, people queue up to pay me my fee, you know, not just because I'm a great marketer, not just because I'm a great, you know, a great you know, person with my branding, but because I deliver past their expectation on their investment. In fact, anyone that's ever worked for me knows that I offer a guarantee, and I, I actually don't really normally mm. talk about it, but I offer a guarantee that at the end of the day, you bring the I sit there with a checkbook and I say, if you don't think I've given you more value, um, then I'm going to write you a check for, 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 for the fee for today, my cost back, and your cost for the day. And you know, Because for me, as someone that doesn't like my process, that didn't get something for my value, is worth far more than a hundred thousand, two hundred. That's probably worth a million, two million dollars to me. If one person that goes to that process doesn't. So for me, it's about adding value. Here's for you guys. I mean, me aside, and here's the thing: it's twenty-five is what I charge for a day. That's going up to forty at some stage in 20, 2015. <laughs> so if they think twenty-five is bad, you know, we've got some issues. I think you're about to pay possibly ten times that to somebody else as well. So you know, it, it comes down to your value and. Let me tell you something very, very quickly. Eight years ago, um, Aaron Sansoni was worth $280 a day. I'll um, pay it. <laughs> I'll pay it. I'll have a year's worth. We're just going to pop up a link now. You can buy that online. So, you know, so, so and, and for me, this is very important. I had to work out my worth. Then I had to go charge that. And I haven't looked back since. I mean, I didn't start at 25 and say, no problems. Let's, you know, let's go for it. As my global experience grew, as my results grew, and I still remember the guy that I first... Got got two hundred eighty dollars for him. We argued over GST and all this kind of stuff, and I and I added to his bank account not a huge sum, but about forty two thousand dollars over three months. Forty two grand. He paid me two hundred eighty dollars to do it, and I went, well, "What am I worth then? If I'm giving you forty five, what am I worth?" So here's the thing, you know, this is not even about me anymore. I charge what I'm worth, and I get far beyond um, the expectations for people when they, when they work with me, and that's why we literally have a queue of people waiting to pay me that because I also only accept one per month to do it with, but. If you, first of all, it's not just about, this whole, this is a beautiful masterclass about charging your full fee. You cannot, I'm going to say this slowly so everyone can write this down. You cannot charge full fee for what you do until you understand what you're worth. And it doesn't matter what Glenn teaches you or what I teach you. If you don't understand your worth, like I had to go on my journey to learn, and Glenn has done too, and he's going on his journey. If you haven't done that, it doesn't matter any training you've been given, 
you will sit there and when they say, so how much, you're going to go 3% off. 4%, 1%, just 1%, just give me 1%, we'll just call it even. I just don't even pay me, just don't even pay me. You know what I mean? So you guys are going to know your worth. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And you and some people say, well, hang on, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm 30 years old, and why should I pay you 25? You know, you know, you're not, you know, you're not 60, you know, it's experience, it's understanding results, it's brand, and it comes down when somebody says, how much is it for something? You have to say with congruency, and you have to be able to deliver, and all of these things in your, in what you do, I guarantee you, if I was to join real estate tomorrow and Chris Gilmore was 3%, I'll be 3.5%. <laughs> no problems. Has Chris Gilmore got more experience than me as an agent? Absolutely. But I would charge more than him and I want to deliver more than him because I would want to make sure that I've been paid for what I do. And let me tell you one more thing on that. From my perspective as a consumer, I don't give a shit how much I pay you if you're going to get me more of a result. Yeah. What's the big deal? It's not like you're paying a set fee for a thing that you only get. Mm. You know, you're not paying for for for, for a. Yeah, for it's a, not like this bottle of water that's it's two dollars here yeah. and it's four dollars there yeah. and it's the same thing. It's like you're going to commission me on doing something you know better for you. Mm. And anyone that's seen me at a live event knows that my bottle of water is worth a lot of <laughs> a lot of money as well. So does that does that make sense? So I, I think this is a great lesson. This is not about me. This is about people understanding their worth mm. in everything before you learn strategies to say, well, I want to charge this. Understand your worth. Absolutely. So let me just keep a bit of an eye on the time because we've got so much to go through. Jeez, we're through 20 minutes already. So let's get through it. There's two parts to getting your through full, full fee. There's pre-selling. There's what happens before we get there, and then there's what happens that you say in person. And at least it's my opinion that the part one of that, the pre-selling, like what happens before you get anywhere near them, is way more important than what happens, than some magic dialogue, some magic script that you can't, you know, Aaron, I've never met you. Let's just say I've never met you. And um, I am uh, you know, meet you at, a, at an event, and I don't have any idea about your reputation, the results you get. Convince me that you're worth 25 grand a day with magic words. Yeah. Well, it's, it's AI. I mean, for me, it's ART, as you know. Yeah. Um, you know so, so go through the, the ART process, okay. if you can, just quickly. So with words or without words? With words, you say? With, with, with words? No, no, I, I, what I was making the point of, and you can see this isn't scripted, guys. I'll get excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought I got a chance no, to no. do something. Well, what, what Tell me the pen. <laughs> what, what I was saying is is that, in my opinion, there's no words that could convince someone without authority and, and oh, results yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and trust yeah. that it can't be done with magic words. With the cool, you need the first bit. Copywriters would be the biggest industry in the world because it's just about words and you put some words on a website people will buy from you so yeah and absolutely. there's more to it than there's just that it. so uh, again i liked eric cartman back in the day that uh, when he says you will respect my authority and that's a that's authority yeah. which is the first in your trio of things yeah. so give us the short version of what the a the, in art art yeah. what, what the authority is in in planet so so a stands for authority and expertise so now more than ever before you need to become an authority uh, a trusted authority and an expert in, in, in your field. And, and I give a quick analogy here, and it's really simple. We are in an age of, uh, of information where everything we want is at the fingertips. We can just Google whatever we want, um, you know, and, and the reason why we go to see a doctor, um, you know, um, you know uh, to see if we've got an, an illness or, or a rash is because if we type it into Google Doctor, it tells us that, we, you know, we're, we're going to die of, you know, some sort of scaggy disease. <laughs> so we go see a doctor who's an authority, and whatever they tell us to do and to take, we go, we do, we do and we take it. Yep. So. Even with all of this information around us, we still are looking for authority. And even because there's so much out there and so many people having their opinion on something now, people are looking for people to be authorities and experts mm. uh, in their field and what they do. And, you know, a lot of your guys have books and things mm. like that. It's a great way to show your authority and expertise. You know, I always say I'm in magazines all over the world every month. And a lot of the articles, not all of them, I write. I have a team of writers and I write some articles. And unless I'm really enjoying what I'm writing, it takes me a long time to write it. But I know I have to because yep. it's a part of my credibility to be, you know, to be in, you know, a, you know, a Forbes magazine or to be in a Sales Pro magazine, you know, all that kind of stuff as well. So that's the first part of it when it comes to. And, and the way the way I kind of explain it, using I suppose relatively different parlance, but it's the same principle, is I talk about you know the generalists in any field are the ones where they have to compete on price. You know, like you mentioned the medical, the doctor, yep. Google or whatever. When you go to the doctor, your general practitioner gets 60 or $70 per consultant, per appointment, mm. or, or whatever the case may be. But when that, that person refers you to a specialist, they get, uh, they get more. Mm. And when that specialist, but, but the question I ask people in the medical field, okay, if a GP gets $67, 
for, for, for just a sniffle or whatever. And an ear, nose and throat specialist gets three or $400 as a specialist. How much does Dr. Phil get? You know, and, and Dr. Phil would get, I don't know, five or 10,000. And yet it's not because he's a better psychoanalyst than the specialists. Mm. It's because he's what I call a celebrity specialist. Mm. And the unfortunate truth, it's not fair and it's not right. But the unfortunate truth is that celebrities have more clout and more power than people who are experts, I suppose. So that's the pinnacle of the expert thing, is the celebrity version of the expert. Mm. And, and so, and I'd ask you this, guys, um, just as a, by way of example, who's going to make more money? A PhD, doctorate of human anatomy, and knows everything about the body, knows how the body metabolizes fat, knows everything. He's a credible expert. Who's going to make more in weight loss, that person or Michelle Bridges or another weight loss expert off The Biggest Loser? I can promise you, it's, it's the person with their arm around Cindy Crawford, with Cindy Crawford pointing at that personal trainer saying, that's my dude. Yep. And especially, you know? I mean, I looked at a really interesting study about Gen Alpha and all the, you know, the new generations are coming through now and, you know, how they start to plot. Is there another, is Gen Alpha? So it's, it's a new one, Gen Alpha, 2010 and above. So wow. my, little, my little Alessandra, she's, she's, she's a Gen Alpha. So and, I've never and, even heard that term. I know, I know. So, <laughs> and so, you know, the, the whole point is that they look at how they behave and how they're going to behave when they're in their teens and wow. as an adult. And they're becoming more and more and more and more self-absorbed. They're becoming more and more and more, um, you know, even more than, you know, Gen Y and all the stuff that we get criticised for and Gen X and all that kind of stuff. You know, they're becoming worse. And, you know, they're, that's, they're, they're talked about the, the idea of how the celebrity is growing to a powerhouse. In the next five to ten years, the celebrity power of like a Kim Kardashian or whether you like them or not, they're amazing at what they do. And for no reason anymore. Be three <laughs> to five times as powerful. I mean, wow. Kim, Kim Kardashian would pay, you know, $10 million just to say a word, let alone $500,000 to say a word now. So, you know, the celebritization of a brand is, is absolutely ridiculously powerful. Mm. And the good news for you guys is, see, we've got a bunch of my guys that um, both Aaron and I have worked with. Like, I've got up on the screen Chris, because Chris absolutely in his area is a local hero. You can't walk down the streets in his area without seeing his face. And if he and I walk down his streets, everyone's waving to him. Same as Jesse James in his area. I've got Andrew up there. I mean, Andrew Kiriaku, one of our mutual clients. I mean, that guy was re a couple of days ago, we were on the phone. It's probably a couple of weeks ago now, but he spoke at my recent little tour. He was stopped in a bakery by a lady who said, can I get a selfie with you? Took a selfie photo with him. And her daughter was there embarrassed to be seen, saying, Mom, you are so embarrassing. So this woman <laughs> was so encapsulated by the fact that Andrew Kiriaku, a real estate agent from South Australia, look him up, uh, was so encapsulated by his celebrity, she would embarrass herself in front of her child in order to get a selfie with him. Do you think, and I quote, here's what Andrew said at my recent Be Phenomenal event, and I quote, it's now criminal how easy it is to list properties. Yeah. When you get this right, that, you know, you and don't I think have to that, I think the idea is that everyone can do it, and Andrew doesn't mind. You know, I, you know, I work with Andrew, and so do you. And you know, Andrew is just a guy with a general, you know, um, a general upbringing. In fact, probably, you know, not a, not a great upbringing, um, like like a lot of us. And he just found something that he could master, that could be his thing, and it's the thing that's now. You know, Andrew's not been an agent for ten years. He hasn't, mm. you know, but he just got good at one thing that really drove it, that became a celebrity. And 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 now, you know, if Andrew wants to charge. Three, four, five percent. He's going to charge. Yeah. I would pay Andrew three, four, five percent to get forty thousand views on YouTube. What do you for it? Yeah. If, but, you, if yeah. you're going to get an extra hundred thousand dollars for my home, take your extra two percent. Go for it. Yep. Have it. And that's the mentality that must change with agents. It's the mentality that must change from you guys. And that's the first thing I said to you is your worth. You have to change it. And, and here's, I suppose, the key, guys. With Andrew, I mean, because I've worked up close and personal in the trenches with Andrew and his team. Uh, in, in their office, and they've made a decision based on their dialogue. See, we role play this stuff. With Andrew, there's not much to role play because they're even on the phone saying, now, Andrew, I've got this idea of what we can do with the video and because Andrew's little thing, he, he uses video marketing. Not that that has to be your thing. That's his thing. Um, it could be if you wanted to, of course. It's one of the modules that I cover in, in, in our stuff. But um, they've made a decision to list with him before he got anywhere near them. They're already going to, there's no listing presentation required. Yeah. It's only negotiation maybe on the fee or the marketing or how it's going to be done. One of them just said to him, before anything even started to talk about 
they'd always said, now can you jump off the roof? And <laughs> You know, so they've made, and that's the principle there, is they are going to yeah. list with him, yeah. period. Yeah. Don't matter about the fee, yeah. don't matter about the marketing, yeah. it's just already done. And that's why, I mean, that's why that whole celebrity thing, it's so important. That's why I did the thing with John McGrath. That's why I hung out with Bob Wolf, with Larry Winger, with Paul Tite, with all of the, and it doesn't even have to be, by the way, real estate industry specific. You know, why would I show you a photo of me and Keith? Because me and Keith hanging out, it was a couple of years back, but me and Keith hanging out, Playing guitar together just makes me that little bit more celebritized. Why does me and Alice Cooper in daggy plaid <laughs> golf pants, look at the golf cart in the background, going out for nine holes, right? Why does me and Alice Cooper mean anything to a real estate agent? It means if I'm hanging and banging with Brian May from Queen, Eddie Van Halen, Billy Joel, Tim Minchin, here's my main point. Guys, I lose money when I do these big events. Big shock. I mean, if you knew my numbers, I don't even break even on a thing like a be phenomenal. Tell me why I would lose money, spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to do that. It's because if there was a lineup of this caliber, basically a who's who of real estate in this country, led by the number one speaker in the planet, there is no way Glenn Twiddle is on that bill unless Glenn Twiddle's holding the checkbook. That's why I do an event like a Be Phenomenal is so I'm in with the celebrities. Because one of the things the celebrities have in common, one of the indicators of celebrity is you hang out with other celebrities. So that's why I do it, guys. That's one of the ways to do it. Get out the checkbook. I mean, one of my guys, um, he recently, you know, I, I know this may be a B celebrity, but let's go with it. He employed Pete Rosethorn from Kath and Kim, right? You know, Brett Dean Craig at Kath and Kim. He employed at my insistence, because I heard that he was local and available, and he got him to interview him and do an interview about, so tell me, why is it that you're just so bloody good? And there's Pete, who's, you know, and you might find that celebrities are a little more affordable uh, than you might have otherwise yeah, thought, yeah. you know, with the exception of some. Uh, we're not going to talk about it on this webinar, but Aaron alluded to it before. But <laughs> if you're at the recent tour, you know who I'm talking about. Bloody hell. Anyway, let's move on. Indicators of celebrities. So let's go through some of the devices you can use in order to show a consumer, like you think about, if you had a list in your head, how do you know a celebrity? So, author of a book, you know, the, 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 you know Aaron, you're an author. Tell me about your. My first became an author because I wanted to be have the higher credibility initially, oh, and, and my team wrote seventy percent of the book. Yep. Um, and then subsequent books that I've written since then, and ones that I'm writing now have taken me a lot longer because I've written Because you've got to write it. Um, yeah. But I don't care because now I was already an author, you know, and that was just an additional tick. And in my mind, because I'm a visual and I don't like to, you know, I barely passed um, school and, you know, and, and for me, I wasn't going to sit there and write a, a massive, huge book. But if somebody's an author, and I mean, you've, you've given books to most of my top real estate clients. So, you know, I get them to walk into that listing presentation, slide it across the table and be like, did you get a copy of my book? Let me sign it. Looking forward to working with you. You know, you know, put the kettle. Well, let me, let me just quickly, I know this is sort of off the script, but let me just go to Facebook uh, and let me just minimize this a little bit. I hope you guys can still see this. Um, here's Johnny McGregor, right? He's a, uh, a student of mine and Aaron's. Here's John. He just put on um, John McGregor presenting, uh, so one of his clients posted a photo of John speaking at an event, putting the community first, being a speaker. We're going to talk about that being a, uh, a part of this before, but there's John's book. Don't give it away. How to sell your, and now look at this, this is Joanne Barr. Haven't put it down since I got it. Joanne Barr. Um, here's, as we go down, um, Dan Danielle Tubbs. I received this personalized book today in the mail, super excited to get reading. They're posting his book and tagging him in on it. Inspiration at its best. If you're ever planning on selling your property in any market, this book is for you. So proud of it. These are just John's peeps. You know, now there was one when he first threw it up himself. Oh, there's another one, Justin Turner. Um, that's good. Now, here's the one. All right, now, I don't know if I'm going to find the comment, but let me find it. When John first put the cover of his book up on his page, this one was by John. After a little bit of delay, they finally arrived. So here's his book arriving. Let's have a look at the comments and see if we can find it. Okay, a few people congratulating him, of course. By the way, when was the last time you got, how many comments? 186 likes, one share, and however many bloody millions of comments this is. Think about this now. I'm on the lookout for a very specific one. 
Oh, there we go. He, he just had to prove that it was a book. Just glue that. Someone said it's just a look. No pages, Scott. Just the best looking cover on the market or something. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I'm wasting all our time here. I'm looking for the one. Oh, there we go. Joanne. Oh, the lady who noticed that. I didn't even realize it was the same person. Joanne must give you a call. We are looking at selling. She now has a copy of John's book. Guess who just got a listing with one tool that John learned uh, in our and the book cost two dollars and the book cost two dollars. <laughs> so there's an indicator of celebrity. Celebrities are they've written a book. Look at every Biggest Loser. Yeah. They've all got a book on weight loss. Yeah. Look at every celebrity chef. They've all got a cookbook. You know what I mean? Or TV host. Yeah, well, every, yeah. Carl, they've all got a book. Carl? Carl, got Carl a book. Stevenover got a book. We need a book. So guys, if you haven't already got a book, write a book. Yeah. Or yeah, or or, or call, contact me and yeah, don't write it. Come come and talk to me because I wrote it for you. But but I mean, in all seriousness, um, I did have a book written. In fact, I've now had three. The next two are one I just got delivered a couple of days ago, and then the next one has just been commissioned, so it's on the way. So it's a choice of three for different purposes. But I paid for the legal rights for you to have it. So if you don't want to write it, contact me because I don't charge much. It's you know I just give it to my clients. So um, email me if you're interested. But the next indicator of celebrity is we are interviewed by the media. So either find a way to get interviewed, get interviewed, you know what, I would even say by the media, or get interviewed by anyone. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's newsworthy. I mean, we, mm. we could go on forever about media, but it's newsworthy. You've got to yep. find something that's newsworthy. You know, you being a real estate agent is not newsworthy. No. You know, you've got to find something. Is there a house that's at a you know, 86 year high in the street. Is there a, a record of something that's happened that, you know, has some old lady that owned the home for a hundred year looking at like find something that your local newspaper want to pick up and want to get mm. people to read and, you know, and, and make sure that your face is next to it. Well, we did one in Brisbane when the Broncos used to have their initial, when the Brisbane Broncos, the rugby league team, was originally being formed, uh, they used to have their, their meetings and their parties in this bar under this house. Yeah. So because that became almost a Broncos folklore property, yeah. we focused all the marketing on yeah. that. You know, so um, that was newsworthy. That got press. But us just saying, oh, it's a lovely home and we're really good agents, that well, ain't going to get press. Here's the correlation here for you guys. What we're saying is it was a normal average house, but it had something cool about it, which you marketed and people wanted to learn more about it. Don't we say the same thing about ourselves? Mm. Instead of just marketing yourself as an average Joe Blow or just an agent, Find something about yourself and market that differently. It's the same with the house. Mm. It's the same. That's the whole point. This is the reason why that house will get more money than the average, yep. and it's the reason why you, as an agent, can get more than the average when you find. And that, you know, when I talk about my ART, that's part of the T. It's not all the T um, because that takes a long time to, to, to teach that. But but part of it is their story, and that's exactly what you've done for the house. Mm. It's standing out in this crazy world where everyone is just talking, there's so much noise, mm. you have to find ways to stand out. And guys, the reason we're going through this little list, this is the checklist of what you should be looking to do. So understand, you should be taking notes and saying, right, I need to be an author of a book, whether I write it myself and take six months, and that's cool, uh, or you find some shortcuts in order to get it done quicker. Uh, finding a way to be interviewed by the media and, and even interviews that I've done with you. When I interview experts like an Aaron Sansoni to bring to you, it raises my celebrity by hanging with other celebrities in the training field. Um, so one of the other indicators of celebrity is you are asked to speak in front of groups, and we just saw it as John's. The reason John is speaking at that event, believe me, it's not because he makes money doing it. He's doing it because we told him, find a place to speak. And go and speak in front of groups because I think it might, and I don't know if you've done some study on this, mate, but it probably goes back to school days when we're told you sit and you listen to that person up there speaking and you do whatever. I reckon there's some deep, weird psychological it stuff goes, I mean, it goes with back, regards to that. Well, it goes back further. It goes back to if you believe in the religious times, it goes back to a leader. You know, people are looking for leaders. I mean, it's the reason why not just churches but places of worship that are non-religious um, denominated are massively growing because you've got all these super powerhouses of just groups of people that are not praising a religion, but it's just people want to be a part of something. They want to be, you know, fulfill a part of something new. So we are looking for leaders in our world now more than ever before. So it goes back even further mm. than the school classroom, but there is an, there is an embedded command. Absolutely. So if somebody, if you're sitting down and someone's standing up, you, get, you know, learn from them as well. So absolutely. absolutely. Mm. You, know, you speak, get asked to speak, speak on Glenn's stage. Well, that's it. I mean, make, make half a million dollars as an agent and you'll get yeah. on stage. Well, and that's the thing, guys. You might be wondering, how do I get to speak at a Be Phenomenal or yeah. something? Guess what the secret is? 
you go out and apply some of these strategies and say on stage, hey, here's one of the things I learned from Glenn, and you're in, yeah. right? You're in. Yeah. All you've got to do is, is succeed for yourself. Make yourself half a million, a million dollars a year or whatever, and then say, hey, I learned a few things from Glenn, and here's what I learned. That's how to do it. Yeah. And then in turn, I've had some people come up to me after a bit phenomenal where I've been praising clients of mine like Danelle Weissman and, and other of my guys who I got to speak at a be phenomenal. And they've said to me, um, that's unfair. The way you position Danelle and you've got recording of your introduction of Danelle, it's unfair. You know, and I often say, hey, Danelle pays me to make it unfair for her. That's the deal. Sure. You know, if your coach doesn't make it unfair for you, sack them. I mean, seriously, that's what your clients, but they pay you for an unfair advantage. Absolutely, yeah. that's, what they, that's what they come for. And then the thing is, why wouldn't you put some up in great standing and say, this person implements it, they're getting, you know, they're getting great results, and it just helps you guys. I mean, there's people, like Andrew's now globally, well, not globally, Australian, no, nationally known. Absolutely. Danelle's nationally known. Tom yep. Carlin's nationally known. Yep. Because these guys, Chris, good normal, he's nationally known. Chris now, you know, has a, has a program that he's created, you know, because he's realized that he's learned so much from you, and it's worked so well that he's mm -hmm. like, okay, now I'm going to go teach out. Well, and that's the next thing. We give away free advice. You might notice that... Um, uh, well, tonight, look at this. Tonight we are sitting here giving away free advice. Why? Because experts give away free advice. You know, when, when someone's on Koshi, they give away five or six tips in their area of expertise. So guys, create the books, give stuff away, and it induces the law of reciprocation so that those folks out there feel indebted to you, and they might not pay you back with a listing. There's other ways to induce the law of reciprocity. Yeah. yeah. Oh, tons, thousands. Yeah, too, give me three hours. Yeah, too, too many to, to cover now. But again, they now here's another indicator of celebrity: public haters. I mean, I consider myself a pretty nice guy, but I got them. People, there are people literally who, despite me giving away stuff till the end of time, to doing all this stuff free, for even having reasonable. I have haters. You have haters. I tell you what, Oprah has haters. You know, if Oprah's got them, none of us are, are exempt. You know, uh, well, you don't you haven't really made it yet. Hey, that's, that's what they say. You know? and, and the other indicator of celebrity is you've got for every one hater, you've got ten public endorsers, fans. So those are some of the things that we have as indicators of celebrity. Now, uh, without going into too much about how an authority sale works, but um, you know, just quickly, you go see a specialist. They take diagnostics. They refer you to a specialist. Limited availability. So you can't. Here's one of the things that we can't do, and I know I might let you sort of handle on this is when you go to see a specialist, it's not like we just drop everything, is it? I can see you anytime. <laughs> you know, how does a celebrity specialist have their time frame set up? Well, they have it. Well, the way that they work is the same. The same way that what a lot of agents are doing. Like I'm, you know, available anytime. But you know, I was recently, you know, for the you guys that know, you know, all of the hospital, and I was like, there was two surgeons to choose from. Um, one was available immediately, uh, and one was available in an hour. Um, you know, because he's booked out. You know, generally, but something came up. You know, in an hour. You know, and and this person was referred as a bit more of an authority. So we're going. Well, this person's booked out. Slightly high recommended. You know. Is that the person we want to choose to go to? Never met the person, you know, had the same hanging certificates on the wall as the other person. Yeah. But we look at this, you know what I mean? We look at this as part of the credibility and the, the urgency and the availability. And I think that a lot of agents, and you know, you hear me say that sometimes, I say that a lot of agents do this, you know, I'm available whenever you want. I'm available at midnight. I'm available on you know, Sunday morning. I'm available, you know, and that's a problem as well. If you're so available, you can't be that successful. Mm. <laughs> you, know, well, you think about how it, people think. You know, if you end up, heaven forbid, with, with cancer or some sort of life-threatening illness, and, and, you know, when you call that specialist, they're going to say, hey, I've got an appointment three months from Friday, and do you want it? Mm. You know, they don't say, I'll keep the thing open. You know, they'll say, hey, by the way, the phone's ringing, Bubba. You better take it. It's inconvenient from start to finish. You know, when you've got a, a and, and here's how it works. They prescribe whatever you're supposed to do, and you do it. Yep. That's the beauty of it when you get this right, yep. is we prescribe a solution, and people do it. Absolutely. You know? um, so tools to assemble. We need a killer pre-listing system. We need our own book. We need interviews on video. We need articles written by you and about you. Uh, and a high fee, you mentioned it before, if you're the most expensive, it implies you're an expert without any other uh, implication. I always give the example of diamonds. I always say, you know, if you, if you go past the diamond ring, it looks the exact same. One's five grand, one's 25 grand. Without even looking at it, you, we all think the same. 
there must be better quality diamonds. Yep. That's what we think. It might be completely false. You might have gone to Tiffany's and be getting a completely ugly <laughs> ring that you can, you know, that's all cloudy, but they're charging you five times the price for it because it's Tiffany's, you know? So, mm. so but that's initially what we think, you know what I mean? And I give the example because I was in Tiffany's the other day and I saw a ring for 200,000, well, I didn't see somebody else, <laughs> saw a ring for 200,000. And, and, and that ring quality, I kid you not, that ring quality um, was 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 a terrible quality diamond, three carat terrible quality diamond that down the road at a, at a great retailer would have sold it for thirty thousand wow. dollars, and they're charging. They actually took us in the back room to show us. They, my wolf my, pulled it out. Kid you not. My wife, the first thing she says is, she's like, "That's not a D. <laughs> you know, it's a, <laughs> it was cloudy." And they were like, "Oh, it's, and it's two hundred thousand dollars." Wow. Know? But we thought back room. Two hundred thousand dollars. It was either stolen or it was a, you know, mm. it was. A, but two hundred thousand dollars. But that ring wouldn't have gone for two hundred grand if you'd stamped another label on it. Absolutely. So what Tiffany's have done there in that example is they've celebritized their entire brand. I can promise you that is a task you don't want to play with in real estate because, frankly, it's a it's a task beyond. Look, I'm a half decent marketer, and I ain't going to help you get your brand to be famous. Uh, but you. I can get you, it's it's personal brand, and that's what we, we lead it to. I can get you to be famous as a human being. I can't get Joe Bloggs Real Estate to be famous. I can get it to be well known, but you as a brand, we can absolutely celebritize you from a personal brand perspective. Best example is Sir Richard Branson. Sir Richard Branson, absolutely. Virgin is is, is not a rock, not rock stab, and it's a good brand, but for Sir Richard Branson, he, he is the celebrity, he is mm. the brand. Yeah. So here's, I suppose, what I want to sort of say about Tom Carlin came to me, and he had, now understand, he was a beast before I met him. There was Tom's personal brand when he came to me. It was the same photo on everything. There's his bus stops. Now, he was already doing a million plus, like 1.2, 1.4 or something, a million when he met me. He was already one of the best agents in this country at 25 years old. Then what I did is I showed him John McGregor's photos. Now, understand, these, look, you can still see the fan in there. He's just took some photos up against a, a wall, and I said, now, Tom, we need some photos that are better than that real estate thing. So I sent him this, and we, if you now Google Tom Carlin real estate, you'll still see some of the old photos. But tell me what stands out more, his new photos or his old photos? You know, so when Tom went and got this, here's what happened on this recent tour. I love this. It was like in Melbourne, it was the first day of the tour. I showed these photos of the new Tom. And I showed that first photo, then I showed the second photo. And then I showed this photo of Tom and his partner, and a girl in the front row swore and said, he's got a missus. <laughs> because those old yeah. photos would not have elicited yeah. that reaction because yeah. they were just real estate photos. These photos show Tom as a person, not as a no arms. You ever see those real? Oh, let me just go back. Here's a real estate, the normal real estate photos. Never have any arms. Always just head and shoulders and we cut off the arms. How about we see some arms? We see some personality. I always think you know? about that. Though. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> so now these are the tools that we've got yeah. sort of going in Tom's world. We've got yeah. the new brand on there. Tom was already a beast. Now he's bordering on two million and he's 26 years old. I tell you. And even, yeah. you know, what even Tom said to me, and I interviewed him, um, and, and, you know, when we're big, he's like, you know, I've just... I'm, I'm just a person. I'm just a person. It's like I'm not being blessed with everything. I'm not being blessed with all of the things that you would think that someone that would make two, three million dollars that we think has to have. He's just like I've just done it. I've implemented what I've been given, and the guy's tw like 26, 27, making yep. a couple of million dollars. Oh yep. my goodness! Mate, you know, beast. I love it. But I love working with him. All right. So I want to just show you some of the examples of the tools that we've had created for agents just like you in, in markets no different. I mean, don't think these guys are special. So one of the things I learned from my man Matt is about saturation marketing. Now, this is on the, the, the result part of your ART. Yep. This is the results. This is how we show our community the results we're getting. And one of the implementation keys I give is, guys, don't start from scratch. Take something that's working, tweak it, and deploy yep. it in your area. So here's a bunch of uh, sold flies. This is the proof. This is the results of what we do. So on the front, we just have sold. Week in, week out. So notice that these guys, they're not reinventing the wheel. There's Johnny's. You know, now you can see that these guys are all doing variations on a theme. But notice that if this was in your mailbox every week, double-sided A4 glossy with big, bright, you know, you, you need sunnies to 
to look at that. You to know, look at that. Well, again, I'm I'm the only person yep. on this call on the webinar. I'm thinking. Yep. That's not a real estate agent. Yep. I'm telling you. So as a consumer, if I that was in your letterbox that, every would, week, I would definitely both of them. I'd look at, but definitely the one with the hammer even more. Yeah. But what I'm what I'm saying, if that was but in I'd your, look at them and if, I, if and you I'll were in, if, if every week that was in your letterbox and you had to pick it out of your letterbox every week. You'd get a bit annoyed by it. You'd yeah. go, fucking guy, he never gives up. And then you'd chuck it in the bin. Yeah. But three so years later, when it's time to sell, yeah. but who's on the call? It's 16 points of reference. We all know that. You've got to have it. It used to be three. Now, 16 points of reference you need. And you'd still look at it. You'd understand what it's about. You'd throw it out. But because I've had my 16 points of reference, and I'm ready to list my home, when I think of an agent in the area, I think about the guy that looks like it's got a Tom Walker above his head. You know Absolutely. What I mean? that's, that's the person you want to list with. If you guys are smart, you'd be pressing screen print right now. And, and, and this is the stuff that's being done for me. This is huge marketing and time that's gone into this stuff, and you're just going to mimic it. You're and and on the back, working. there's your proof right. thing. Yeah, look at that. Exactly. Photo of the yeah. people, yep. what they said, Sold and Johnny McGregor. And if you guys have done a lot of trade with me, you know I talk about people buy only three things. There's three real things that people buy, and if we had time, we'd go into it now, but I don't. <laughs> I mean, but um, you know, we, I'm, I'll be covering a ton of this stuff anyway next week at you know the boot camp that I'm doing because you know it, we we make it so complicated, you know, and it doesn't need to be. And let me tell you, Susie looks amazing. How good Susie? And Susie never. And I'm going to say, Susie, you didn't want to get in front of a camera at all. 12 months ago. Is she on the call? Let me just see if she's on the call. Let me see if we can unmute I'm going to say it anyway. But Susie didn't want to hop in front of a camera, didn't want to take she's photos. <laughs> um, good, so we can tell everyone. And you know what? This is great. You know, this is great to see the personality behind the brand. And, uh, you know, that again, this is something that you'd pull out and you would look at because it doesn't look like an oil brochure and you'd remember the name and you'd remember the pattern, you'd remember the person. Yep, Love sold by them. Susie. Now, Susie owns the property palace. Understand this. And Susie's no slouch as a marketer. I don't know if you guys know Susie. Susie's Dane Atherton's mum, right? So if you guys know Dane, Dane's a beast, man. He's awesome. One of the number one Harcourts guys in the country. And Tom Carlin, by the way, is the number one Harcourts agent in the country. I think Dane's the number one office. So Susie, and Dane said to me once that he learned everything he knew from this woman here. And Susie's a client of, of Aaron and, and mine. And Susie did what? Six million over five yeah. months yeah. when she before she you know when she just met us. And then um, three months ago she did fifteen million in one month. That's ridiculous. <laughs> so what I wanted to just quickly show you is these guys had a crack at it. I grabbed this screen off Facebook that Harcourt's Warrigal had a crack at personal branding and but do you notice how small the, you couldn't recognise like that that dude there could be Aaron. Probably carrying a few extra pounds, but that dude there could be Aaron, you wouldn't know it. Here's Susie's Facebook ad that we have pop up in her people's timeline, geographically specific to her market area. You couldn't ignore that personal branding, right? And for the people who are interested in more money or who need an update, that's personal branding on a social media level. Can I add something to this? What I love about what you're doing here with Susie, I don't know if it's yours or her idea, is this is playing <laughs> along. This is well, this is playing along Su Susie's personality. You know what I mean? We're not saying, Susie, stand like this, and you have to stand in front of this car, and you have to. We're just going, what's your personality be you? And you can tell that you've not said, oh, stand with your hands like this. You've just no. gone. She's just done it. You know, it just snaps. Just be who you are, yep. but just understand what we as consumers are looking for. Because I would pay attention to that. My wife would pay attention to that, and she looks like a normal human being, not an alien real estate agent. And that's the reason why she did fifteen million dollars in commission into her office in July. You know, the biggest she's ever done because she understands how to play the game now. Mm. So here's some examples of the the design doesn't have to be expensive, guys. This is Frankie's. Here's what Frank did. He sent us some photos of himself. We cut out the edge at twenty dollars an hour or five dollars an hour or something. We pay overseas designers. He sent us some photos of yep. some books, other people's books that he liked the look of. And next thing you know, there's Frankie's book. Yep. You know, there's Naomi who's on my staff, agent over in WA, who works for and with me, and he, she helps me implement some of these things for you guys. There's her book. Yep. So we just get the photos of you. There's Susie's. Look great at her. Photos. You know, yep. great stuff. Yep. Although that crown looks like it might be trademarked. <laughs> <laughs> so there's Dan Richardson's, Janelle Weissman. See, um, now understand, these guys didn't write their book. These guys, there's Janet, our, our mutual friend, uh, Janet McNeil. Um, these guys didn't write this. You know, this is the book that, that and we Janet, wrote. And Janet released, Jan, when, I met Janet from about $200,000 a year, and she's worked with me personally, one-on-one um, -on -one in one of my programs for the last 
I think, 11 months, and now and she's doubled. She's on 400,000. And one of the big things that not, you know, there was a ton of things that she did, but one of the things was we went through not just getting the book, but some strategies on how to distribute the book. And like John, people, you know, she's the author. She's the author. It's people that come into it. You know, double the business in 12 months. Yeah. You know, the same as John's are just destroying things now in, in Monsesson. And, and I mean, a lot of people comment on that photo, and I agree. The minute I saw it, I thought, that's it. That's your, he's not even an auctioneer. I mean, understand, he's not an auctioneer. It's just that what says better yeah, yeah. that I will fight for the last dollar for you than that picture? Yep. It's gold. Yep, I think it worked really well with the headline. and yeah. Yep. Love it. Well, then the, the headline came from John's life. So many people said to him, oh, I don't want to give it away. Don't want to give it away. So that's what he called his book. Mm -hmm. So guys, well, be actually, aware. It's a very important marketing message. Is if we had, again, if we had time, but he sold the number one big solution is that people said, I want to give it away. And that was a headline that grabbed people. So great, Absolutely. great title. So, um, so again, we, we take all of our marketing systems and you don't have to start from scratch. Understand that John modeled this off Frank's, yeah. you know, because we take something that already works, we put your branding on it. Yeah. So guys, don't start from scratch. Just copy these things. If you need the slides, just email me. I'll give you the slides. Yeah. Just take them, model them. If you need some help, we're there to help. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is about, you know, John, these tools of celebrity. John on an interview being asked, so... You know, so pretend this is John McGregor, this dude right here. So I get on an interview on a camera and I say, um, so John, tell me, how is it that you are just such a genius, you get top dollar for every property, no one else can come close to you, what are the strategies that I should be looking for if I was to find the John McGrath of, an, of another area? And I have to say nothing because he's done it all the time. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and then, well, you know what John describes? John describes everything he does. Yeah. It's a listing presentation yeah. done through the guise of an interview, yeah. put on a DVD, that becomes John's business game, yeah. you know. So we're giving you a crash course in this, guys, but understand this is the stuff they pay me 30 grand a year for, they pay Aaron 25 grand a day for, and combined we do all right when we team up and we, uh, we let the sales king rip with the marketing maniac, you know. So, uh, and now part two of this. So all of that stuff was part one. Yeah, Bert and Ernie, yeah, they call us Bert and Ernie. We get called yeah. Bert and Ernie. I'm the skinny one. So. <laughs> But um, so all of that stuff we just talked about, that's all the pre-framing, the pre-selling and everything. I mean, part two is what you say in person to back that up, you know. So, I mean, look, you know what, now's not the right time to be going through that because, you know what, we're probably going on well-proven. There's a lot of things that people would have covered off on you before, you know, um, uh, the old favourite, what sort of negotiator would I be if I, you know, you know or one of the ones that actually is a very good line is, oh, so you're saying that other guy will drop their fee that quickly. So how long did it take you to out-negotiate the guy that you're about to pay as a right. trained negotiator? Create you know? doubt in their mind, and that's mm. one of the best ways you can get rid of an objection is create doubt in their mind, because whatever you say, that has to go through their bullshit filters, and, and if you say something, it's like you're trying to attack them, so that's a great way. All mm. you have to do is create doubt, and I wish we had so much of yeah. If you can create doubt in somebody's mind in their objection, you don't. Mm. You don't. So one, one thing that Aaron Shiner said was the biggest way that he uh, dealt with a fee objection, here was his answer. It was stay in touch with them. I mean, you mentioned 16 before. I've used this graphic a whole bunch. It's multiple contacts, 18 to 24 points of contact per year uh, in various media. Using those weapons that I mentioned before, that's the way to handle an objection before it even becomes one and you get your full fee because you did the job along the way. Totally. And this, this is before you meet them though, right? Absolutely. Oh, okay. This is before. Well, no, no. You meet them here, That you follow up once, you follow up twice. See, so here's the thing. We, we did a secret shop on real estate agents. Two-thirds of you, 109 out of 150, is this meet someone. Well, if you can do it. That's what I'm saying. Or to yeah. make this process. Or to make that. If I yeah. Anyone that's training with me does 12 follow-up phone calls and can't close the sale. Do not say you've been trained by me. <laughs> yeah. And so, so what, what this is, is, I suppose, an indicator of is here's the industry. 150 people meet at an open house. And the script that we had was this. Uh, we're just looking at um, uh, prices. We own a property down the road. We're yeah. just checking out prices. 109 out of 150 didn't get to follow-up contact piece number one. And I can tell you that that's true because we buy houses all the time and the amount of contact we get from agents is almost zero. Yeah, minimal. It's insane, guys. So stay in touch. And then by the time you get to 16 points of contact, like you might meet them in an open house, follow up SMS, you know follow what? up email. Realistically, guys, if you get to four, you're meeting every other agent that's out there. Well, that's what it says here. Contact four. 89.8% .8 yeah. of salespeople have given up. Yeah, you're, yeah you're, you're beating everyone. That's overkill. I'm sure it would work. Um, but I promise you, if you get at least four done, 
Yep. You're going to win the business. That's it. So, so SMS, book, email, a couple of follow-up letters, done. You know what? It's groundbreaking, Glenn, but give a shit. <laughs> yeah. and, and people actually might want to do some. That's the reason why some of our clients that, that aren't blessed with all these natural abilities, not really garlic people, and they're brand new in the, in the industry, they're closing deals. They're getting more and more people come to them for whatever they feel they want because they just follow the basic stuff. You know, they don't have to be, you know, um, you know, they're just going to follow up. <laughs> they're going to, they're going to look after them. Understood. Love it. All right. So, mate, I promised a few people that contacted me before who wanted to come to that boot camp uh, that I would hit you up. And I know people are going to think this. They look, the boot camp has been sold out, and it is. So, Aaron's had a waiting list, but as promised. Um, I needed to show you guys a little bit about what we're going to be getting up to and what the availability is. And I